is uh, tooth formation stages so dental lamina so dental lamina in primary epithelial band so what happens to dental lamina so in the epithelial band at 10 points so this dental lamina at 10 different points which represents the future deciduous tooth bud there will be rapid multiplication of ectodermal cells so there will be a knob like structure formation because of the rapid multiplication and it grows into the underlying mesenchyme okay so it becomes like a enamel organ or it is known as bud stage so it is the first stage so that various stages we will be uh, dealing later so it's like a bud so it is by the rapid multiplication of ectodermal cells in the dental lamina at 10 points in maxilla and also in mandible because we have 20 teeth 10 in mandible and 10 in maxilla 20 deciduous teeth so all these points there will be bud formation or enamel organ formation okay so these uh, growth will be towards the ectomesenchyme that is the underlying ectomesenchyme and it appears first in the mandibular central incisor region the mandibular anterior region so we know the first tooth forms the first tooth erupts is uh, deciduous lower central incisor so this is a bud stage so at 10 points in dental lamina so dental lamina is nothing but the lingual extension of primary epithelium band so it becomes like a uh, bud stage later more proliferation happens so more proliferation happens it will result into a cap like structures so when there is a cap like structures we have two components that is dental papilla and dental sac or dental follicle so dental papilla is nothing but the inside of this cap the ectomesenchymal cells increasing in large number so this tissue appears more denser than the surrounding mesenchyme and represents the beginning of dental papillae so you cannot see a dental papillae here because there will be a structure it is more deeper in uh, outline because there will be rapid multiplication of cells and the cells between this uh, inside so the cells within uh, the cap they will undergo rapid multiplication and it will become more denser compared to the tissue which is present outside so this is known as dental papillae and dental papillae which actually give rise to dentine and pulp okay so dental lamina is this one so dental lamina is soon to be detached from the developing tooth so now let's move on to the dental sac or dental follicle so the surrounding combined enamel organ or dental papilla the third part of the tooth but so it is known as dental sac or follicle and it consists of ectomesenchymal cells and fibers that surrounds the dental papilla and enamel organ so this is the enamel organ so covering the enamel organ and dental papillae we have the third structure which is known as dental sac or dental follicle okay so this is covering the enamel organ and dental papillae so dental lamina is here dental lamina is soon to be uh, become rudimentary because it will be detached as the tooth grows so from dental follicle or dental sac there is structures some cementum periodontal ligament and alveolar bone arises so from dental papilla dentine and pulp forms and from dental follicle or dental sac cementum periodontal ligament and alveolar bone forms so we know that this is a tooth and this is a tooth structure okay so you know it looks like a tooth crown so surrounding tissues ultimately develops into the cementum periodontal ligament and alveolar bone so the dental sac or follicle is coming at the lower portion so obviously the future root will be here 
future cementum will be here and future alveolar bone will be here and the enamel organ that is enamel organ this one it give rise to enamel okay so dental papilla giving dentin and pulp so inside the enamel organ we have pulp and dentin because outermost layer is enamel inside dentin and pulp so the inside structures giving rise to dental pulp and dentin the lower structure that is sac or follicle giving rise to cementum pdl and alveolar bone it is very easy to understand you need to visualize this as a crown of tooth then it is easy enamel organ give rise to enamel papilla give rise to pulp and dentin and the lower portion dental sac giving rise to cementum pdl and alveolar bone so this activity of dental lamina is uh, up to 5 years after that it uh, continuously disintegrate or detach from the developing tooth and last session we had seen the remnants of uh, dental lamina will be present in jaw or uh, gingiva which is known as epithelial pearls or cell rest of uh, rest of serine so that is about uh, but stage and cap stage so i'll be explaining more about this uh, three stages but cap and bell stages but before that we need to understand what is enamel organ what is dental papilla what is dental sac and dental follicle and what is dental lamina okay so dental lamina is a most primitive structure from dental lamina the enamel organ develops so as it grows as it develops more and more this dental lamina will become less important or less prominent so now this will uh, go on increasing and it differentiate into various structures so uh, the cells uh, or the organs which giving rise to the future cementum enamel dentin pulp periodontal ligament and alveolar bone you need to understand from where it is originating and what's happening inside the enamel organ in bell stage uh, histo differentiation happens due to the continued growth that is uneven growth of enamel organ it requires a bell shape so in bell stage the crown shape is basically determined so it was thought that um, the shape of crown is actually determined uh, or influenced by the pressure exerted from dental papillae on the inner enamel epithelium so there will be pressure from dental papillae on the inner enamel epithelium which influences the crown shape at the same time there will be a opposite pressure balancing pressure from the stellate uh, sorry uh, yeah stellate reticulum uh, to balance this pressure which is from the uh, dental papilla and the stellate reticulum opposes this pressure so these both pressure determines the shape of crown and the folding of enamel organ to cause different crown shape which is due to the uh, different rate of mitosis and difference in cell differentiation time so this is basically uh, a crown uh, shape deciding uh, stage and uh, various uh, functions uh, such as amelogenesis and uh, formation of odontoblast ameloblast so all are happening in bell stage so inner enamel epithelium uh, which consists of single layer of cells that differentiate prior to amelogenesis into tall columnar cells which is known as ameloblast so this becomes ameloblast so ameloblast uh, later give rise to enamel so these elongated cells are attached to one another by junctional complexes uh, in lateral uh, position and to cells in the stratum intermedium by desmosomes so it one another attached by junctional complexes and with stratum uh, intermedium by desmosomes so the cells of inner enamel epithelium exerts a strong influence on underlying mesenchyme on the dental papilla which later differentiate into odontoblast so dental papilla exo ectomesenchyme in dental papilla will be influenced by the ameloblast here which later becomes odontoblast so stratum intermedium 
is a, another structure which we don't have in cap stage which is present in bell stage it is a few layer of squamous cells uh, form stratum intermedium between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum so stellate reticulum and inner in inner enamel epithelium uh, we have stratum intermedium stratum intermedium is a new structure which we were not having in cap stage so it is present between inner enamel epithelium inner enamel epithelium is here and this is stellate reticulum between this we have stratum intermedium stratum intermedium so what is the function of stratum intermedium it is uh, essential for uh, the enamel formation so enamel formation is the role it's it has got a role in enamel formation and next we have stellate reticulum which we had seen in uh, cap stage that is uh, star star like uh, cells which is present between outer and inner enamel epithelium so it continues to grow by um, imbibing fluid from dental papillae so later what happens is as it continuously grow, uh, grows and accumulation of intracellular fluid also increases and finally it collapses and it become a narrow zone thereby reducing the uh, space between outer enamel epithelium and inner enamel epithelium so this uh, will be reduced the space will be reduced and outer enamel epithelium and inner enamel epithelium will be uh, all come in approximation because that space between these two will be completely reduced the outer enamel epithelium uh, it is flattened to form low cuboidal cells so this outer enamel epithelium is thrown into folds so it thrown into folds uh, which are rich in capillary network and this provides a source of nutrition for the enamel organ so these uh, folds which uh, with the capillary network which provides nutrition uh, for the enamel uh, organ so dental lamina which is uh, extend to lingual side uh, and it is known as successional dental lamina which give rise to enamel organs of permanent successors of deciduous teeth uh, till premolars uh, distal side the molars will be developing and dental sac exhibit a circular arrangement with circular uh, fibers and resembles a capsule around the enamel organ so these fibers of dental sac uh, form the periodontal ligament fibers that is between roots and bones so the junction between inner enamel epithelium and odontoblast outline the future dentino enamel junction but the major changes are happening during the advanced bell stage so instead of histo differentiation which was in the early bell stage we have morpho differentiation so what is happening in advanced well stage so it is characterized by the commencement of mineralization and root formation so the boundary between inner enamel epithelium and odontoblast outlined the future dentino enamel junction which we had seen earlier and formation of dentin occurs first as a layer along the future dj in the region of future cusp and which proceeds pulpally and apically so there will be dentin formation happens first so there will be first layer of dentin forms along the future dentino enamel junction so this is a dentino enamel junction so first layer of dentin forms and which forms in the region of future cusp cusp region it forms and proceeds pulpally and apically so it moves towards the pulpal side and apical side and after the first layer of dentin is formed the ameloblast lay down enamel over the dentin in the future incisal and cuspal areas so once the dentin is so dentin is the first uh, thing which is formed after that ameloblast lay down enamel over the dentin in the future incisal and cusp region so then enamel will be formed over the dentin at the 
incisal and cuspal areas. So the enamel formation then proceeds coronally and cervically in all the regions from the DEJ towards surface. So from the DEJ it moves towards coronal and cervical direction. So coronal direction and cervical direction from the DEJ towards the surface. So the enamel forms and which moves coronal and cervical direction whereas the dentine which forms and moves towards the apical and pulpal areas. So after that what happens? The cervical portion of enamel organ which give rise to a structure known as Hartwig epithelial root sheath. Uh, this has which outline the future roots which is responsible for size, shape, length and number of roots. So this will be dealt more in detail about uh, root formation. And next stage that is a apposition phase formation of enamel and dentine matrix. So apposition is the deposition of matrix of the hard enamel structures. So appositional growth of enamel and dentine is a layer like deposition of extracellular matrix. This type of growth is therefore additive. So what happens is let it be enamel or dentine it is forming layer by layer. So one layer will be added so the the next layer will be added above that then there will be above that so it will be keep on adding so this is an additive effect this layer itself cannot create another layer so the layer has to be added so that is known as additive effect so a positional growth is characterized by regular and rhythmic deposition of extracellular matrix which is itself incapable of future growth so it cannot create another layer by itself it has to be deposited one by one so layer by layer it will be deposited which is uh, basically incapable of future growth mm -hmm.